Hi everyone, welcome to my 2023 knits and review video, uh, also known as what I knit in 2023 or everything I knit in 2023. These videos have um, multiple names now and I've seen a couple of other people do their own spin on this format, which I've loved seeing. Um, today might be a pretty lengthy video, so go grab yourself your favorite beverage and come back, <laughs> maybe get cozy, pick up your current favorite whip and spend some time with me. I really appreciate it. I just wanted to mention one quick thing before we start. Um, I saw those twins who knit, Jess and Rachel, put up a disclaimer that this is not supposed to be a video uh, for anyone to compare, like, compare themselves with which I quite enjoyed them talk about this like little disclaimer before showing off loads of knitwear. We're all in different seasons of our lives, some in which we do have to focus on other things more so than others. And I am very fortunate to be in a season of my life where I can spend loads of time knitting, where I can focus and prioritize knitting. And I think the amounts of projects that I finished really reflect that. So. I will try and insert some pictures or b-roll of me wearing them and focus on some of the aspects of how the items and the yarn have worn, how I find the construction to fit my body and my preferences and would really um, hope that you find some of these things interesting and can take away some of them for your knitting plans next year and yeah I just I, I just really I'm just really excited to share. Today is the 5th of January and I have not found the time to sit down and film. As some of you might have seen, I have participated in Vlogmas this last December and so I've been filming quite a bit for that. I've uploaded a weekly Vlogmas episode, so if you haven't seen that, you could check that out after watching this video if you would like to. So first, before getting into the details of all of my projects, I wanted to give you some stats. I'm usually not the numbers type of person, but I am a very organized person. I love to organize everything that I'm doing and I love to take notes. And I have found uh, Ravelry to be really helpful for that this year. I'm gonna talk or um, say a couple more sentences about Ravelry later on in this video. I know it's not for everybody and seeing as to some of the more controversial things that the people behind Ravelry have done in the last couple of years, um, I know that, like I said, it's not for everybody, not everybody can use it and I, I don't think that's a good thing. I think they should do more to be more uh, inclusive to the com like for the community so more people could use it without having any health risks. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to get into that too much since that's not the topic of this video, but still note-taking has helped me quite a lot. I've been taking analog notes for planning in my maker's notebook by Sophia, uh, a friend of mine from Seattle, and she gave it to me at Flock Fiber Festival, uh, but mainly for stats and how much yarn I use and what size I made and how many stitches I, um, uh, I cast on or any modifications, I mainly use Ravelry. And I also find that to be a great thing. So I can, if I'm talking about something in a podcast, I can refer you guys back to it. I'm going to try to link as much as I can in the description box, but as usual, <laughs> This takes um, uh, quite a bit of effort and time and I hope uh, that the description box will be big enough for my uh, 54 projects. Yeah, let's get into the stats. This last year I have knit 11 sweaters, 3 cardigans, 8 tees or tanks, 11 pairs of socks, 21 accessories, decorations or homeware items and that makes an overall project count of 54 finished objects. In that, <laughs> um, that included 15 gifts and nine tests. So test knits. I'm going into 2024 with three single socks, two started blanket projects, one shawl and one sweater. I didn't have the um, the goal to finish all my whips last year because that would have been crazy and uh, when I'm gonna talk about my December making you'll see that I uh, had 
a focus on a different thing that month. Um, but for sure, I want to finish the shawl and the sweater and maybe two of these socks this January. If you're interested in my um, seasonal planning, Q1 planning, or uh, I'm thinking about doing like maybe January till um, April, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. Um, I'm planning on maybe making a video like that. And I will be talking about how my planning has changed as well and what I've learned this last year. Uh, in these projects, there's also one de-stashed um, item I gave away for a person to reclaim the yarn and four disappointing knits, um, so I, I wouldn't revisit them in a way. I wrote down that these were disappointing in a way because they did not suit my style or the yarn wasn't what I had hoped it would be or it just didn't fit the project. So, for example, the de-stash yarn was um, more of a wintry yarn in a summery project and so that was just a miscalculation on my part. That's not to say that the products or the, the patterns aren't great. And then I also had one pretty bad dye lot dilemma. I'm still going to try and make most of these um, work. I will try and make myself um, put them on and style them in a way and if I don't wear them in the next couple of months I might just give them away. You will see in my knitted, like, knits and review that I have um, gifted quite a, a few things. Like I said, I, I gave away 15 of my hand knits, which I think is quite a high count. Um, I will put on the screen how, what percentage that is of my overall knits. I uh, calculated that, but then I forgot again. <laughs> and I think that is also something that I will keep on doing. Um, if something doesn't fit me, if it's too small, too big, uh, the color doesn't suit me anymore, I think gifting the knits to another person who cannot knit themselves is actually a great thing to do. You could also donate them, you can uh, frog them and reuse the yarn, uh, or you can sell them. Um, I think for the price of the materials that you used, usually it, um, most patterns would state that you're not allowed to like commercially sell them, which I would understand as like making an Etsy or another reselling like platform and making them in bulk and then selling them. I wouldn't think that it would be a problem to just like sell a single item just so you could get back maybe the cost of the materials that you use. But that is my take on it. And like a, a friend of mine and I, we've talked about it and it's also her take. So you can have a different take on that. I would be interested in your take on that. So if you do want to share, what do you think about that? Feel free. Um, I want to talk about how the yarn and the item wore. I want to talk about how often I wore them. I did not take any kind of like stats on that. It's just more of a like a feeling. And I'm going to be as honest as I can. If I haven't worn it a lot, I'm going to tell you. Actually, there's one item I haven't worn once, only to try on, but then never again. And then some of the other items, I just know that I have worn quite frequently because I have pictures in them from different times of the year and yeah I mean finished objects that I've just recently finished obviously won't have as much wear but I can maybe predict if I will wear them loads in the future as well and then would I knit it again I've actually knitted quite a couple of things twice this year or some things I've knitted again which I've already knit in 2022 as well and I might note that I just hope that I won't forget too many things. I want to share my top 10 knitting patterns this year as well. Some of my, how did my last year's yearly planning go? <laughs> and then some of my highlights uh, regarding knitting this last year and then what I learned. I hope, and then some goals for 2024, um, which are linked to what I learned last year. I, so I hope this is not going to be too much. I might take a break actually in between, uh, maybe grab some lunch, make myself a cup of coffee. I'm not sure. Um, and then how could I forget? Actually, I'm going to share some of my favorite media from last year. So my favorite top four, because I couldn't just like pick top three books, films, and series. Some of my favorite notions, and then share some of my favorite podcasters and podcasts. I know this all sounds a lot. Uh, I still have a couple of other formats that I wanna, like I said, film in the next couple of weeks. Um, and I just thought this might be like a concise rounding up 2023 and then going on. Um, yeah, let's start. I'm gonna 
open up my Excel spreadsheet and let's start with January. Um, so my first finished object of this year, I'm going to go by when I finished the object. Uh, with some of them, I might tell you how long I knit on them for, but usually I'm just going to state when I finish them. So my first finished object of this last year was the Hottie Sweater by Paula Strict. This I knitted in drops alpaca boucle in a chocolatey brown color. And like I said, if there's anything that I won't mention because I can't remember, it's going to be hopefully linked in my Ravelry or you can always ask uh, in the comment section down below. Um, this was my first hottie sweater. You'll see that I knitted two more this year. I didn't actually, uh, with my first one, get to um, knit the construction as it was written down because I found it quite difficult to understand the first time around. With my second and third, I uh, followed the instructions and then actually realized that it wasn't too difficult after all. That is actually a reoccurring theme with Paula Strict patterns for me, but I will get more into that later on in the video. I really enjoy this make. I use it like in the colder month. I use it almost daily. I like uh, having a hot water bottle like on my um, on my stomach if I have any cramping or on my back if I have a, a bad back or a back ache. That is a mouthful. Um, or just on my feet if I'm cold in bed just before going to sleep. So yeah, first finished object of January. Then my second one was something I had knitted on this uh, 2023, not 2022 already, but I finished in 2023. It's the zipper sweater by Petite Knit. It has a zipper, obviously. This was my first This was my first zippered like project uh, and my first Judy's Magic cast on as well. Although I think I've used the Judy's Magic cast on for the hottie sweater as well. So that was a lie. Um, I'm pretty sure this was the Kremka reborn or recycled wool, which has um, a small percentage of polyester just from recycled bottles, I think. I don't want to lie about that as well, but just like that's what I remember about it. And then the, I think it's Kremka Silky Kit, Silky Kit or something, their mohair. This was gifted at the time by the company for me to try out and um, just see what I think. Um, I've had a couple of um, sweater quantities gifted to me this year. The Most of them were for test knitting <clears throat> purposes. And I will always link if that is the case. Like I said, it doesn't influence how I feel about the products and I will always be open and honest with you guys about it. But yeah, this was gifted. I like the finished object. It is um, a great outdoorsy project to, or like a sweater, to just put like a rain coat or like a rain jacket over. It's really warm. It has been pilling moderately, I would say. It's not the worst. I actually quite like depilling my project project so I don't really mind. It's actually more um, pilling on the inside. So I haven't uh, prepared any of these knits for the video except for my boyfriend's uh, socks because they needed a depil really badly. So I haven't depilled any of these projects uh, in preparation for this video just to uh, show you guys how they've worn recently. I usually depil them after a couple of wears, every couple of weeks slash months, really depending on how much I've worn them. So uh, yeah, this I'm really happy with this knit. It's not my favorite knit, like of all of them, but it's uh, it's quite high up there. I like the color, like the chocolatey brown. I think it suits my quite pale skin, and the yarn feels quite nice. So yeah, that's my second finished object. My third is actually the Sophie shawl, <clears throat> again by Petite Knit. This was another um, a remake of a pattern I had already tried in 2022. This is... You can see it's 
it's quite a long project. I will try and not knock down the tree. <laughs> it's gonna go like, we're gonna take it down tomorrow, I think, or maybe in two days. It's quite long. I usually maybe put it around my neck once more. It's actually quite nice to have it quite close to your neck. I actually forgot the yarn that I used for this was, I think like a six ply sock yarn. Was it Schuckenmeyer? Something like that or Regia. I think it might've been Regia Tweed, um, which I got and make, made another beanie with, which is the next thing that I don't uh, have with me because I gifted it. So this was my Sophie scarf, my, no, my second Sophie shawl. I had made a couple of Sophie scarves in 2022 as gifts. And so, yeah, I mean, I like it. It's not my favorite. I think maybe it's a bit, it's a bit light. And for me, this makes me a bit pale. I'm not sure. I wear it sometimes. It's not the softest. So I prefer my um, gray Sophie shawl in Smilla Pura by BC Garn. This, uh, like I said, Regia one. It's nice. I sometimes wear it. I probably wouldn't run to make it again, but yeah, it has hold up really nicely. There's no pilling at all. Yeah, it's a nice project. Not my favorite, but it does what it's supposed to do. <laughs> so my next finished object was the Lento sweater by Jana Hietala uh, for Elena magazine. This is what it looks like. This is probably my most uh, fitting sweater, like from the way in, it, in which it is constructed and from the way in, in which I have knitted it. Sorry if I'm stumbling over my words a bit. This is made in, so all of these information I'm grabbing like from memory, so I hope I'm not uh, saying, especially because it's been like a year, so I hope I'm not saying anything incorrect. But as far as I can remember, this was the uh, Four Ply Merino by Woody Knit, uh, a cone in a green, like dark green color, and then, or like dark green brownish color, and then a um, drops alpaca. Um, and I held it double so there's no more hair in it, which I found loads of people using for the Lento. So I wanted to try out a version with alpaca. You can see the pilling is actually sometimes quite bad in the underarms. There's just like little yarn, I don't know, like pillars uh, coming off of it. It's not the worst, but I find that this is a project that I have to um, de-bubble quite a bit if I wear it. It's really warm because of the alpaca. I think other than just like some regular pilling, this is worn quite nicely. I quite like it with a high uh, waisted jeans because this is quite cropped. Um, and yeah, it's a nice staple basic raglan sweater and I'm happy that I made it. So the next project I don't have with me because it was the first gift of the year. It's the Hitchhiker Beanie. I, I think I just gave that to my mom just for no special occasion other than that she's my mom. Um, I made it in uh, the, the same Regia, I think it was the same Regia tweet, the white tweet one. Um, I wanted to try a new sweater construct, no hat construction at the time because I had mostly made the Stockholm hat. Uh, the pattern was by Spectacular and um, I'm not sure how to feel about the pattern. I quite like that it's quite chunky looking but still it was a bit fiddly with the decreases. I don't think I did it correctly. I'm not sure but when I finished it I kind of realized that like white tweed is not for me. So, as so much, but I was happy that I had made it. And like I said, I wanted my mom to have it because I didn't think I would be wearing it. Um, so yeah, that was my last finished object for January. Um, like I said, I passed that on to her and I started February with my first test knit of the year. These are the macaron mittens. They're by uh, Lydia Rababa. And the test was sponsored by Olivia and Oliver Fibers. Um, <clears throat> she gave us um, four ply sock yarn and a 
alpaca suri to make these mittens with and um, they are really soft and warm. I quite like the fit although if I and when I make them a second time which I think I might I want to make them in like the glove version where they the fingerless glove version I will make them a lot longer. The one thing that I have found is that this is just too short for me and if I'm wearing a jacket over it um, it tends to um, like creep down my hand a bit and then I'm I feel like I might be losing it. I also will have to make the thumb like maybe half a centimeter longer and a thing that I have found just with mittens in general is that it feels like they they twist on my hand a bit when I'm using them they feel like they twist like this a bit I'm not sure if this is just the way in which my hands are built like my fingers but I think this could be counteracted with just a bit more like hold here so I will definitely make them a couple of uh, centimeters longer maybe like five centimeters longer here uh, when I make them a second time but they've been a really nice thing to where on like the really cold days in Germany we don't have a ton of days where something like this would be required uh, but like maybe 20 days out of the year they're so cold that you would need something like this so for those days these are really nice um, and yeah then I continued knitting socks or finishing up socks these were actually my uh, Christmas socks whenever I'm showing you guys socks and they don't have like a specific patterns. They're usually the vanilla sock recipe by the crazy sock lady. I like the um, heel flap and gusset construction just the, the best for my feet. I find that they stay up on my heel the best. And yeah, so I have made these in Lang Yarn Yabol um, and the Sisere Christmas colorway for 2022, which was like a chocolatey color with some green and orangey specks. These uh, heels haven't worn the best since I didn't know and I just realized after finishing them that the Yavol yarn as well as the Arvetta from Focalana actually has a second thread inside the yarn ball which is a, like a looks like a worm like a yarn worm it's a it's a specific shape of yarn ball which only a couple of scandinavian um i've i found scandinavian yarn bands have for sock yarn and they have this tiny like uh bobbin of um i think thread that has nylon in it so you could hold it with um the heel and I have not done that because I didn't know at the time. So if I could remake these, I would change that and put it in the heel. I would lengthen the cuff. This is something that I have learned since um, starting knitting in 2023 and then continuing this last year in 2023. No, I've started in 2022 and continued in 2023 is that I enjoy a higher cuff more. They're nice. I've worn them um, again and again. I am wearing my socks in my boots as well as in my sneakers and at home in my uh, Birkenstocks and wherever. I just wear my, my socks because I I think socks are for like wearing them. <laughs> uh, I um, exclusively hand wash my socks though. Um, I've just found them to be, uh, yeah. I've, I've put them in the washing machine once and especially in the in the winter the the washing tends to be all, all right with the wool um, wash program on my washing machine but then if the the clean water comes in like it, it gets washed with a detergent and then it gets kind of like uh, with clean water it get, gets washed out and then spun uh, in like the on the spin cycle <laughs> Jesus I can't I kind of explain myself really well in English uh, when it comes to knitting machine jargon. So, or like knitting, knitting, knitting machine. When it comes to washing machine um, trivia, kind of. <laughs> but what I've heard is that the second water that comes in tends to be, especially in the winter, it tends to be super cold. So if you've washed this on like 
30 degree like regular washing water uh, in your wool cycle and then just really really cold water comes then it can shock the knitting um, project and if it's then like on the spinning cycle as well there's just felting like it that's just inevitable which happened to two of my uh, hats in 2022 so i'm not gonna risk that anymore although most of my sock yarn is super washed and with nylon um i just tend to wash them after a couple of wears especially if i wear them over some cotton socks um i don't tend to wash them like after every time that i wear them and even if i wear them like uh, normally i can wear them like two days without having to switch them i just find like i said wool has self-cleaning uh, com components and um, I have never found any of my knitted socks to smell funny so I don't know take of that what you will <laughs> but yeah some hand knitted socks the second sock of February was a valentine's gift uh, we're not usually people who, who do valentine's day we might go and like grab a pizza or anything but we don't do gifts usually um but as a knitter and as a as a person who loves to gift um i took the occasion um and knitted hannah's his first pair of socks and these are also vanilla socks and they're in elderflower sock set by olivia and oliver fibers uh in the dk sock set and then I'm not sure what the white colorway was called, but yeah, it was a sock set. So yeah, I had to really depill these uh, a couple of times already because he loves to wear them. Uh, but as you can see, now that I have depilled them, they look fantastic again. So, and they have a, a real like weight to them. I think I'll have to make myself uh, a DK sock set as well because I really like them and yeah I put them on his um on his cushion when he went to work and then afterwards he found it with like a little love note <laughs> and um yeah I just I was really happy to see how much he liked them so this was really um inspiring for me to knit a lot more <laughs> for him this year and this next year as well um so yeah vanilla socks DK the next thing I had finished this last year was, I'm going to say the same thing all, <laughs> I'm going to sound like a broken record. I'm going to try and make it a bit more short and sweet and snappy. Next finished object, Monday sweater by Petite Knit. So this Monday sweater was my first fingering plus mohair, like hand dyed fingering plus mohair project. I had gotten the eggnog uh, in 2022. Actually, I ordered it after seeing my friend Chelsea knit a sweater with it and then it got lost in the mail and I had to reorder it, which was very unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I held it with a knitting fall of mohair, which is one of my favorite mohairs. And I made this super nice, like this is for me like the perfect easy sweater to put on if I want a bit of something in it and it just not being like tonal. Um, it pairs well with jeans and anything. Um, I'm not sure if I would pick the color again because of like yellow not really being a color that I usually wear. But I think just also with the mohair and everything about the sweater, it's so muted that it's basically a nap, like a neutral. And I just like the idea of having a matching knit with uh, Chelsea. So yeah, this was, um, like I said, my first hand dyed sweater, I think. I wear this quite regularly. I'm, I'm not sure. I can't put like a count on it. I'm saying like I've knitted, I'm saying like, I've worn it 20 times or anything, but I can see this sweater living in my um, yarn, um, in my sweater wardrobe for
forever basically like I think it's a pretty timeless piece and I have uh, worn it at least um, once a month in all of the months that um, a mohair cart like mohair sweater would be um, would work uh, to to wear so I think it's quite difficult to to gauge how often you've worn something if you don't take notes like every day which I wouldn't want to do uh, for myself so yeah Monday sweater by Petite Knit. The next two things were uh, gifted again, so I don't have them with me anymore. Uh, it was a Stockholm hat, uh, also in a white tweedy yarn, which like you have all now known, <laughs> is not something that I would think that suits me very much. Um, but I had my brother, I made him close his eyes, be like, I need to try on something on you. And I put it on him and looked at him and I thought that it was suiting him quite nicely. And so I put it back in my gifting cabinet and I gave it to him this Christmas. Like I said, Stockholm hat also by Petite Knit. And so, yeah, I gave it to my brother for Christmas. So my last finished object in February were these uh, DK socks for myself. This was the um, Christmas colorway by Olivia and Oliver Fibers. And I really like the green color that they had and like the speckled colorway. This was a uh, fingering weight um, sock set though, and I held it double to create a DK sock, which um, in hindsight, I'm not sure if I would do again, because then I, I felt like I was uh, playing a game of yarn chicken. And that's why I marled the heel, um, which also in hindsight, I wouldn't maybe do like that again. I thought it was a clever thing to do at the time and like a, a fun thing to try out. Again, I would lengthen the heels on this, um, not the heels, the cuffs, uh, just because I prefer the look of that more so now. Um, I still like them, they're quite dense, so, um, I mostly wear them around the house. They're thicker than my uh, the socks that I like to wear in my um, boots. So yeah, that was the last finished object of February. Um, I'm actually going into the next month of March again with a test knit that I don't have with me anymore. Uh, it was the weekend hat by Petite Knit and I gave it to my father-in-law for his 60th birthday, which was at the end of this last year. So I had made it in March. I had intended it to make it for myself um, at the time with Isaiah, um, I think Jensen and the Isaiah Soft Silk Mohair, but um, I really wasn't keen on the fit on my hat. And then um, my father-in-law actually tried on a head of mine, the hipster hat once, uh, while we're at, the, at like a birthday party and it just it just suited him so nicely and then I actually thought that m this hat because maybe of his like hat uh, shape or something would fit him too and I was correct uh, he loves it so much he wears it all the time he's been wearing it around Christmas it suits him um, very nicely if I say so myself and I'm really happy to have kind of given it another chance because in my wardrobe, like I made it and then I didn't wear it and I had put like thought and love into it and like a th three folded or like double folded brim. Uh, everyone who has made that pattern knows that it's um, not as quick as other hat projects. So I was really happy to be able to um, gift it to someone who appreciates and wears it. Um, next up, one of my favorite knits of the year, I will mention it again in my top 10 knitting patterns, is my second test knit of the year, and it's the Judy sweater. So this is the Judy sweater by Gregoria Fibers. This was my second test for Gregoria Fibers. Um, I had tested the Jones sweater the year before, which was my first test knit, and I think this must have been my third then. Um, and yeah, I just love the texture. I've recently talked about this knit on the 
charity live stream uh, where I was in invited to do a Q&A with Benicia, the woolly worker, for her 12-month knitting podcast anniversary. And um, I said that a couple of things that I love about this. I think it has really neat edges. I like the... Um, the bind off, the Italian bind off I did on it. I love the yarn. Again, it was gifted uh, for the uh, test knit by Isaya, so um, that was really nice, but obviously it didn't change my my the way in which I think about it. Um, I really like uh, the Jensen and Alpaca One. I will always go back to Alpaca One. I think it's, it's cheaper than um, mohair. It's not as fuzzy if that's not what you are looking for. And I'm hoping to knit with it again in the uh, not too distant future. <laughs> I mean, it's, it pills a bit and I'm just picking it off and going to Hoover <laughs> around my, um, around my, uh, the couch and um, this seat later on. Um, but yeah, I just really love it. It's squishy, it's quite hefty, like it, it has some weight to it, which makes you feel like you, you're you being hugged by like a knitted sweater, which I think it's nice. And yeah, this was definitely my favorite test knit of the year. I gotta say, just the combination of the pattern, the yarn, everything, I've learned so much with it, like doing yarn overs, knitting two together, like in pattern, how to, change up a pattern if there's decreases and increases which definitely was the most challenging thing for me in like the the collar area i love the twisted rib it's just such a neat project and i that that this one will live forever in my wardrobe i'm sure uh i will never let this go <laughs> that sounds so dramatic but yeah judy sweater i love it and i hope so many more people make it i know it's been in a lot of people's knitting plans recently and for good reason. Um, the third and second to last finished object for March was the hipster hat by Petite Knit. This was made in Olivia and Oliver Cashmere DK in um, Burnt Umber. I think this must be one of my favorite color ways that she has brought out like ever. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure if I will be putting on all my hats, but yeah, this one I just love to wear. It's dense enough, so um, I feel like it's warming, but it's not too heavy, it's not too thick. I like that it has this like little no me <laughs> um, point at the end. I feel like a little, yeah, like a little garden gnome or like a, a little Christmas elf, which is nice. So yeah, this is one of my favorite hats that I made this year. Maybe top two favorite hats. Love the color. Love a little pop of color. Although it's like not too... It's a little, it's Marlene color. Like it's not too in your face. But it's a muted autumnal red. So of course I love it. <laughs> I think I didn't make any major mod modification. I might have made this a bit longer than the pattern um, called for. The next hipster hat I made at the end of the year, I made a bit shorter and I'm I'm not sure which one I prefer. Um, as for the yarn, it has a hold up okay, but I think you can see a little bit of a halo, um, which might come from the like cashmere in it. It feels like it has muted like a bit with wear. Um, maybe with like washing the color, um, like the color could fade a bit over the years, I feel like. I'm not sure, I don't wanna to be too like overly critical, but this was the first time that I used this base from her. And so, yeah, it's super soft, but we all know the softer uh, uh, a yarn, the more pilling or, the, or like uh, fuzziness it can create as well. And my last project for March, which, which was my next test knit, you will see a common theme. This was my year of test knitting. Was the Farnham Tea by the Knit Pearl Girl. So these summer um, or warmer weather knits were just uh, in my basement in like a vacuum sealed bag. So the possible, no possible damage could like no damage would be done to them. Um, so I just have picked them 
um, up again and brought them to our flat. This was made in the Drops Bell, which is really similar to Drops Line, which I also used uh, during the summer then. Um, this was a really quick test net. I think, uh, I mean, the deadline was a lot longer, but I think I was like the first to finish this. I was really hyper focusing on this. It was a really um, kind of like addicting um, pattern to knit. The, the sleeves were so short that they were super easy to make. It was quite difficult to find the right way in um, to kind of do um, the bind off because this was my first knit with non um, woolly yarn. So my first summer yarn project uh, and this really kind of taught me that like how different the different materials um, have to be treated while knitting really. So if I had, uh, and I did that with the, um, I think with the neck ribbing, um, if I bound off too tightly, I wasn't able to to pull it over my head. And so I had to do it really, um, uh, to the do the bind off really loosely. So these were some things that I learned in the summer. This was maybe one of my most worn um, hen, knits like summer knits this year i really liked it i liked my color combination that i chose it was really inexpensive as well um just because the the yarn was so inexpensive i'm not opposed to spending more on yarn if i know that i'll wear it for like years and years to come but i also like to save on some of my making materials another thing that i talked about with uh venicia on her la latest charity live stream it's obviously not everyone's um, able to spend however much they want and I know that I am very privileged to have all the yarns and work with all the yarns that I do but also this is like my main thing like my main hobby and partly now with doing YouTube videos as well uh, some of these expenses in a way I can justify by doing YouTube videos and talking about them uh, in a different way that maybe another person would be um and like i said i don't want to sound braggy or anything i just want to i i don't think it's um for me uh rather like a, um i like how venicia does it with how she writes down how much a project was i don't enjoy calculating stuff like that so i i haven't done it and it would be a bit difficult for me to do so because i uh, try to use so many of my scraps so uh, some of my projects didn't cost anything in that regard and others were a lot more expensive some I swapped some I got secondhand some I got on sale and yeah I just don't enjoy tracking that so I hope you don't mind that I'm not sharing this uh, you could always look up how much the yarn was originally and um, realize or remember that some of the yarn were, were gifted and some of the yarn I, I always tried to look up the next sale so uh, and yeah now that I work at a yarn shop I also get to get a little um, discount for like an employee discount so yeah like I said I hope none of these things sound braggy or anything like that at all I just try to be realistic with what I have made and what I've learned from that at what I want to take into 2024. So my first finished object for April was this Inga top. I made it in Rowan, I think summer four ply it was called, and um, an Ito yarn. A friend at the time, she suggested me marling these two when we were at a yarn shop, uh, a local yarn shop to her. And I, I really like the suggestion Suggestion to this day. I've mostly worn it as like a, a summer top on really hot days with just like a bikini top or a bra or something like that underneath. Um, or on some warmer days or if I wanted to be a bit more like covered up with a white t-shirt underneath. And so I really like this. I like the fit of it. I might or I would make it again. <laughs> I know that I had knitted loads of it while I was sick and I was watching um, 
Downton Abbey. I don't know why, but this is connected to me watching like 30 episodes of Downton Abbey while having like a, I don't know, like a sinus infection or something like, I was really sick. Maybe it was like, I'm not sure. I was sick at the beginning of April and I knitted on this while I was laying on the couch and like drinking a little of tea. <laughs> That's what I remember about this. I like the combination of the yarns. I think they're really nice together. They don't pill like at all. Um, it has gotten a bit uh, softer with washing. These like summer tops I put into the washing machine on cold um, and I have not ha had anything bad happen to them. So yeah, the Inga top by Spectacle Streak. If I don't say anything about the sizing, I usually make about a size four. Uh, sometimes a three and sometimes a five but it'll be linked in my Ravelry and if like I said Ravelry isn't accessible to you you can also ask me in the comment section below. The next project I have made was another Lento uh, but I had gifted it. This was actually another project where I had intended to make it for myself. I had bought some hand dyed yarn which was beautiful but then I made it and it was just too small and I don't know to this day what happened like what went wrong maybe or probably it was gauge um, so I had put it to the side for a couple of months actually but then I decided if it's not gonna fit me I'm gonna knit some uh, gifts for my little cousins this year and uh, the biggest one of them she must be around 10 or 11 now I'm really bad at remembering children's ages i'm not sure why maybe because i don't have any kids on my own uh, yet so <laughs> i'm not sure she's the biggest of them and that's why i gave it to her in september for her birthday then i had finished it in april put it to the side put like a ziploc bag um sealed it so um nothing could happen nothing bad could happen to it and then i gave it to her in september and she loved it like she wouldn't take it off her mom had to make her take it off to go to bed. She wanted to wear it every day to school. And I just thought that was the that was the most, most heartwarming like gift moment this year for me. My little cousin, who I think she looks up to me the way in I the way in which I had looked up to her mom, because her mom's my my mother's youngest sister. Uh, which I always looked up to. She was like the cool aunt who lived like in the bigger city close to us. And now she has three children with her husband and I just adore the three of them. And we have a close relationship. And this year I made uh, one gift for each of the three of them. And yeah, so I gifted that. It was made in, I think it was called the Woolly Chicken, um, like a hand dyed yarn I got on Etsy. It's linked in my Ravelry. Uh, it was really nice with like orange and brown speckles. It wasn't perfect for her. Like obviously I would make, like if I had chosen a yarn for a child, I would have gone with my more like rainbow speckles, but still she loved it. Like it wasn't her perfect colors, but that doesn't didn't really matter. It was so soft. I think I must have used um, another Kremke and I'm not sure now if it was a mohair or an alpaca, but it was a, a soft lace strand to hold it with the um, like four ply sock yarn um, merino from the woolly chicken. And so, yeah, that was one of my favorite gift knits this year. Next up for April, I knitted the Hermione's Everyday Socks. And these must be like one of my favorite socks today. <laughs> they were made in the Phoebe and Mercy uh, dried flowers um, sock yarn. Phoebe and Mercy was one of my favorite uh, hand dyed yarn finds this year. I'm pretty sure that my friend Lydia had talked about them and that she had ordered some yarn from them and then I followed suit and got this yarn and made these socks and I just love them. I just, I really love them. <laughs> they have worn, I have worn them quite a bit. I've actually put those into the washing machine and I felt like they had dulled a bit after that. So from now on, I'm just gonna put them into uh, the sink and like hand wash them, which I prefer. Um, I 
I liked knitting them as well, although sometimes you just want like a vanilla sock if you're knitting socks, like easy knitting. Um, this was a bit more, you had to remember to do like the pattern. I think it's a, it's a free pattern too. Um, I just plugged in my favorite heel, which I always do if I do like a, um, a knitted, like a pattern on the, on the sock, I, I just put in my favorite heel. Sorry, I'm picking off like, um, some pilling bobbles. Um, I liked this so much that I ordered from her twice again. Um, uh, one, sorry, I actually did de-stash after though, because it wasn't my kind of colors I realized in the end. And now it's living with someone else and they're making something with it. Hopefully, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure they are. Um, that was also a nice experience to like, just, um, kind of like part ways with yarn that's not making you happy anymore and give another person the opportunity to make something with it for less so they didn't have to. Uh, pay full price which I felt was a, a great thing to do this year and so to limit uh, the excess in my stash which I don't have a, a tiny stash I don't think I have a, a, a huge stash as well which will be another topic for my learnings and what I'm planning on doing this year um, and then I actually from this uh, experience with Phoebe and Mercy who's a German dyer actually um, Christine oops I ordered her advent too, which will be in my next uh, podcast episode. And I might also make uh, a video about what I'm planning on doing with my scrappy advent um, and that one, um, Phoebe and Mercy advent, because I have another blanket project in mind and I want to maybe do a little video about that. But yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm already announcing so many videos that I hope I'll be able to film. Like I said, if I have the time, I will. For sure. Um, again, some of my favorite socks I've ever made and I love the colorway and the texture and the height of the ribbing of the cuff, of the ribbing of the cuff. And yeah, my last April make was another test knit, um, which again, this will be a reoccurring theme. Uh, this was my first test knit for Coco Amore Knitwear, who's Cheryl Mokhtari. I think she's from England. And uh, this was the Brighton Tea. This was uh, the first tea I made in a merino yarn. This must have been merino by Knitting for Olive, I think in putty, like the cooler version, like the cooler white. Um, I had gotten this at Wurm Berlin, which is one of my favorite German yarn store in Berlin, obviously. Um, and I knitted it with yarn from Stash. Actually, this one yarn was from a yarn swap, which I had done with a woman from my knitting group. This year, actually, my friend and I had started a local knitting group and we had also... Um, kind of like initiated a yarn swap with the people that joined our group which was just amazing um and so i got this like lighter green yarn from the yarn swap and the darker green i had actually bought bought before for another project that i then didn't knit up so it went into this project this is um not like completely my style and I knew that from like I wouldn't say I knew that from the get-go but it's not completely my style but that's okay I've still worn it a couple of times um like I said I wouldn't run to make it again in these colors it's a bit more cool toned than what I usually go for I love the green um uh stripes I love that the effect of the two different colored stripes give but yeah, the, the white is m much more cool toned and overall the whole thing. I mean, it fits with the green, but yeah, it's not my like perfect colors. And a merino t-shirt isn't something that is super versatile. It's more so like a, um, a springy project, more so than like a summer project. I still like it. Like I said, it's not my most worn or most favorite project of all times. I'm gonna hold on to it and see how much I wear this summer. And if I 
don't really or spring if i don't really wear it i might um i might gift it next year or i might ask in my family if anyone looks at it and it is like oh i really want that and then i could i could pass it on it's the craftsmanship or the crafts womanship on it it's really nice uh, the edgings the italian bind off on many 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 stitches is really neat and i really enjoy that so another test net done <laughs> um and another month to move move on to this is my first may make or finished object in may because i actually knit on this in april it's the april cardigan by petite knit This was made with yarn from the yarn swap that I had done with my friend Chelsea from True Lane Knits. This was the Petrocore colorway by Experiments and Fibers on the Surrey base and the Brooklyn Tweed Loft. Two of my favorite uh, ever like yarns combined in one project make for the perfect cardigan. I love the construction of this cardigan. I love the buttons that I chose. I um, actually found Pigeon and Wishes on Etsy this last year and I think they've blown up since then. At least that's like from my perspective, that's what it felt like. So many more people have talked about them. So many more people have used them. I think they've come to some um, to some stores as well. So I really love that. I did that like that is a proud moment of mine the combination of this yarn this pattern and the buttons is like one of the knits that really reflects my year of knits i think and it's also a really practical knit because it was my first cardigan i actually made uh, an entire video about how i made this cardigan i hope it's uh entertaining and maybe a bit uh, informative um and it was kind of like my first uh knit something with me video and also my first cardigan make this made me realize that i need more cardigans um and yeah the yarn has worn perfectly like there is no pilling at all this is probably one of the uh few patterns that i have never debobbled um obviously there's like tiny tiny bobbles that you can just pick off super easily but like I have never debobbled this and some of my other makes I've debobbled multiple times already. The one thing I would say when it comes to this construction is, I don't know if you're able to tell, maybe from the back, um, the front has kind of draped with more and more wear and also with the buttons you can tell that it's, it's pulling a bit. And that I would maybe next time try and do a bit of a more compact and like tighter bind off when it comes to the button band or do a double knitted button band. I really like the look of the ribbing uh, on this button band and I'm not like mad at it or mad about it, but I just think that a, a double knitted button band or a tighter Italian bind off would have helped with it not like sagging too much which like I said with wear and I had hung up my knits for quite a few months of this uh, year this last year I've actually just changed to just laying them flat because I always knew that wasn't the best but I just love looking at them so I think that it might help with the drape and how um, well the pattern looks uh, over the years that I'm not hanging them up anymore um, but putting them in my wardrobe instead so yeah this was my first finished object in May this is one of my favorite knits and uh, it'll be in my top 10 for sure as you can probably uh, imagine my next knit was the anchors bonnet i don't have it with me again because it was a gift for my smallest cousin for her christening 
um, I made it for her. It was okay. It was a bit small. Um, another friend of mine had uh, taught me or told me before that petite knits children's head circumferences aren't uh, the most um, that they tend to run small so I should have listened to her more. I actually went up a couple of months in size but still it was a bit small for her and so um, the parents had put it around her and then it, it fell down and it looked like like a little hood which I thought was so cute uh, while we we're at the like the event uh, it looked really cute on her and I'm, I'm happy I made it like it's a really uh, fast pattern and I'm sure I'll make more bonnets for babies in my life in the future for kids that I know um, but yeah, that was a cute thing. I made it in the in some of the leftover yarn from my Brighton Tea and just the white uh, fingering merino from Knitting for Olive. The next um, top was a test knit again. This was the Umbria Summer Top for Cookie the Knitter. It looks a little bit something like this. And I made this in Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. The buttons that I used were also from um, Pigeon Wishes. Pigeon, yeah, Pigeon Wishes. And this was the yarn dye lot dilemma I had mentioned. I'm not sure if you're able to see the different dye lots. I have over dyed it, um, but there are still a couple of problems with this project. I've actually in the summer been wearing this as a, a sleeping top with just a short pair of um, like leggings or sweat um, bottoms or some yeah pajama bottoms. And I've really been loving it. Like I like the dry and kind of like I can't even explain it, but I like the feeling of the like dry silk on my body. But I think I had ruined the silk a bit with the over dyeing process because I didn't use a particular um, silk dye to over dye it, but more so just like a regular wool dye, which I only realized after the fact. And I, I learned so much from comments that you guys have left and uh, conversations that I had on Instagram which I think is like the the one thing that like social media always has going for it is that you're able to learn from other people I really like the look of the pattern I think uh, um, Cookie the knitter it was my first the first time I had ever heard from her and uh, the first design I ever made from her she has like a couple of more ones that I would really like to make she has a beautiful cardigan and a beautiful also like similar to the hollow v-neck but textured all over pattern like I think she has really beautiful style I found the pattern to be quite tricky so it was really challenging knit for me and like I said I like the uh, broken rib stitch really big fan of broken rib stitch but there were just a couple of problems like the dye lot the over dyeing and everything and then when it comes to the fit this this is just a really really big um, neck and with this like the hollow v-neck I'm wearing at the moment my last finished object of the year it also has a huge neck like I could wear it like shoulder one shoulder poking out like completely but because I wouldn't ever wear this with nothing underneath but this is more so like a thing I have um, at least one like layer underneath it's not a problem but this was supposed to be like a summer t-shirt which then I wouldn't be wearing much more underneath than maybe like like a little crop top or a bikini um, top. And so this was just a bit difficult to style, I had found. And also to weave in ends in um, silk was pretty difficult as well. So yeah, I'm wearing this more so as like a sleeping top in the summer, which I'm not mad about. Um, I've made this. I've made my mistakes with it. I have made my peace with it. So yeah, I'm, I have found a solution for it and I, I've been wearing it like that, which I would have never thought I would. 
Uh, my last make for May were, or my last finished object for May were these broken rope socks by, by Summer Lee Designs. They were actually my birthday cast on, I think. This was the eggnog so sock set, I think, with uh, a little rusty brown mini. Um, I forgot what color name that had. And it's, again, a beautiful broken rib stitch. Apparently May was my <laughs> month of broken rib stitch. I really enjoy these um, socks. I like a sock with like a um, separate cuff more I have found but these are some of my favorite socks as well and I'm pretty proud of them because I think they're executed quite neatly. Again these are the Broken Rope socks by Summer Lee Designs and I think they were in like a, a set of sailor socks I think it was called. The next thing I had made were some ripped vanilla socks that I uh, made early for my mom's birthday, which is in September. So I wanted to get a head start on gift knitting this year, which is actually one of my more proud things I have achieved this year and something that I would always do or I would always try and recreate in these next years of being a knitter, uh, which took off so much of the stress of gift knitting. And I think was actually the reason why I was able to gift knit so much this year. So I made these in a yarn again that I got from Etsy to try out something new. I forgot the dyer's name, but I'll put it on the screen. Uh, and it was called something like, it was on the prairie sock base and it was something like golden fields and it was just beautiful. Um, I actually gave one of the mini skeins to my friend um, in her advent and I think she she must have made some ornament or something a little with it which also looked super cute but my mom got these ripped vanilla socks and I will have to make some of these for myself they have such a great fit my mom actually wore them on Christmas when she came around and I'm really proud of them um, really happy to have gifted them to her um, I know like four ply socks are um, a really involved knit to gift because they take some time it's not like a sweater but also it's lots of tiny stitches so she was really appreciative of that and I just love the look I was really proud of them and I was happy to gift them it was really difficult to let go of them though because my mom and I have pretty similar sized feet and I was like I could also keep them she doesn't know that I'm making them for her <laughs> so but in the end I gave them to her um, my next finished object was the stripe hype sweater and this I made pretty much in tandem with my friend Chelsea this was maybe my most popular make this year on Instagram on Ravelry people went a bit nuts for my um, color choice which was really flattering. Thank you guys. Uh, I also really love what I did here. <laughs> Although it's a bit too small for me. I should have made like I should have gone up a size. Uh, it fits me. It's just because it's cropped and then it's not oversized enough for my taste. It's not something that I can wear as I would another knit. Like my Harlow V-neck is just the perfect way like oversized I just think like give it like five more centimeters of positive ease and it would be perfect um I made this in double Sunday by Sentinel's Garden I think it must have been the colorway almond which is the more warm colorway of the two I used both this year and I will show you the other one later on I had actually intended to use this for a festival sweater which with the two um colors up here this is pumpkin spice and this is hot cocoa both are the merino decay by olivia and oliver fibers but i had thought that maybe like a round neck yoke wasn't the perfect fit for me like the way in which i like sweaters to fit on me 
And when I went to Seattle actually to visit my friend Chelsea, I tried on her festival sweater, which loads of her project had inspired me this last year. And um, I had tried on hers and obviously she's uh, she knits a couple of sizes smaller than I do. And so it didn't really fit me. But also I thought if I had still had it had knitted it to fit my size better I, I still not sure if I would have liked the fit on me so I'm really happy that uh, actually I uh, took my plans and I changed them to fit my preferences at the time um, the sleeves I had made in another color this is the one I had also used for my Brighton tea which I love that it's like there's like a red thread running through loads of my patterns um, this was held double because it was a single, uh, the Sunday held, like it was the regular Sunday by Sandler's Garn. In comparison, I have realized that I like the sun Sunday by Sandler's Garn loads more than the double Sunday. If I were to make another project, I would always hold the Sunday double. I think that the Sunday is a non superwash yarn, whereas the double Sunday is superwash. I am not sure if that's correct, but I'm pretty sure. And so I just like the non superwash version more. Uh, the superwash merino uh, tends to pull quite a bit. The double Sunday is pulling quite a bit uh, with wear, especially in areas where there's uh, some like rubbing of like arms to uh, body or something like that. Um, and then the last color of the body is Terracotta by Olivia and Oliver Fibers. And yeah, I love the color combination. I like how it suits me in my complexion, my hair, everything. But I wish, I just wish I had made this a bit bigger. I might just try and reblock it and like stretch it out loads. Actually, one of the ways in which I liked to wear this most was with just like shorts, like jeans shorts and like just a little top underneath. So more as like a summer sweater, which is another learning I'll talk about later because most of these yarns are super washed. This is no really like a warming sweater. It's more so like a spring and summer sweater for like summer evenings, which is nice. Um, and so it's okay to like have different kinds of sweaters. Um, but yeah, it's also a bit too cropped, um, which I sh should have just made the ribbing longer. Another learning, I shouldn't just stop doing the ribbing, especially on the body, just because I'm bored. If I have enough yarn, if I'm not playing game of yarn chicken, I uh, pledge to, <laughs> knit my ribbings long enough in 2024 and not stop because I'm getting bored or like twisted ribs hurting my hands. I can always put it to the side obviously but I should have made this two pattern which I think I, I cropped this pattern, uh, this ribbing by a couple of centimeters. So next time I'm just gonna knit it to pattern and then I'm good to go I think. Yeah. This was my uh, second June make. And then another gift that I don't have with me is the Rick, Rick Morse Summer Blouse Junior by Petite Knit. I'm realizing I'm saying Petite Knit quite a lot. Um, I'm not sure if this is gonna change much uh, in the second half of 2023. I just sometimes find her patterns to be very, yeah, um, especially with like hats and baby makes and like children's uh, things. They're just, um, I'm missing the word, but you can trust them, I guess. Not that they're without fault, but yeah, they were just very easy to get to in a way. I'm not sure what I'm trying to say, but I modified that. Um, that knit pretty heavily. I didn't do any lace um, pattern, which was actually the Rick Morse uh, pattern. I just took the numbers for the size for my little cousin's body. And then I striped it with a drop spell that I had actually intended to make a second for an empty for myself with. And then realized that like a very cool white and um, navy blue weren't my cup of tea anymore. Um, so I just used them to make uh, a t-shirt for him, which he did not like. 
um, that was a very <laughs> humbling moment of gift netting. Those two moments with my two cousins who obviously are so different like in age and in personality um, were really <laughs> very much on the opposite sides of the spectrum. He like wore it for a couple of seconds and then try to rip it off his body and be like oh it's so scratchy and obviously it wasn't scratchy it's like a linen cotton and viscose blend the bell so there is no like um <laughs> animal fiber or like wool in it but yeah to each their own he's a little kid with like maybe he has sensory needs that i didn't know of before and like his parents told me that he was being in a in a phase where he was really particular about what he wanted to wear and what he didn't want to wear and that he was putting his like uh, little trousers into his like socks and always pulling the socks up like he had some ways in which he likes to dress himself at that age already um I think he's like seven, six or seven now which I'm sorry again I can't remember my cousin's ages but it's just difficult sorry um so he had some really particular ways in which he already knew what he liked and what he didn't like and like i think that's that's awesome like kids need to learn about like their own minds and their own wants and needs and um they can always use it for the third child which is just turned one i can remember that <laughs> and they can use it for her or uh, maybe even the biggest um of the three she was uh, trying it on and fit her as well so that's okay that's a learning um gifting to kids isn't the easiest and like knitting for kids as well and yeah I have made my experiences with that that year and I'm not sure if I'll jump to do it again and again and again but yeah uh, it was a nice thing to do so let's go on with July I've actually only finished one project that month. I think finishing one project is like my least finished projects. And then in December, I finished one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven projects, which most of them were like small, but still. One project for July, which maybe also shows that I was knitting less in the summer. I'm not sure. It maybe also shows that I was knitting on a test that I started in May and only finished in September, which I'll be talking about more soon. So my July finished object is the Portobello sweater by Coco Amor Knitwear again. I was knitting on this with my friend Lydia. We did a Summer Stripes cowl that um, kind of like uh, time. I started with an entry with my straw pipe sweater, although I'm not sure if I had finished it before the cowl started, but it was kind of like, it was the summer of stripes. like. My Brighton tea, my, my Farnham tea, my strap up sweater, my Portobello sweater, even the kids' t shirt was striped, so even my socks were striped. So it was stripes all over, and we found that funny. And we found that we still wanted to knit in the summer, and then we created that whole cowl around it, and it was great. Um, this uh, yarn again was sponsored for the cowl by one of the shops that also provided one of the gifts to our winners this is the sadness garden duo in the colorway kit and carry and the sweater looks like this the buttons were just some simple ones by sistrine grene um yeah about this pattern i'm not sure i've worn it as much as i would have hoped i would wear finished objects i like it as like a throw over t-shirt kind of thing but i'm not in love with how big the neck is so you could see a t-shirt underneath so i would need to wear something that also has quite a wide neck which my preferred way of wearing anything is like a crew neck quite quite high up and like maybe layering like I'm wearing now like a v-neck over the like very high neck and this is just pretty wide necked not sure if that is a correct way of saying it I learned some new techniques with this I made this like um Henley style thing which I thought was really cool and overall I really like the look of the finished object uh 
we said that it's giving like Cezanne vibes. There is a very similar Cezanne pattern, but um, yeah, I just, I don't know if I can justify spending so much money on something that I, like a woolen thing. I don't think I've bought any like woolen clothing or like knitted items like from just fast fashion or like any other store since like becoming a knitter in like the last four years I'm pretty sh maybe three years at the beginning I still had some like H&M um like poly knitted stuff which I have slowly gotten rid of <laughs> and like maybe left at my in-laws house so I had like a sweater to wear there if I was there and like didn't bring enough clothing or I took to uh, flea markets and try to sell um and like make room for all my hand knitted stuff but yeah it is a nice pattern um my friend and I like Lydia and I who knit this together we're still uh we were pretty um how would you say that like we agreed on uh, the duo not being our favorite uh, yarn. We both thought it was a bit scratchy. Like I said, I, I I think I can tolerate it still, maybe even because it has this big of a neckline. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really not my favorite yarn at all. I don't think I would rush to make something in it again. I have some skeins left over, which I might do like a baby cardigan or like a small knit with in the future. Just something that is not like directly on their body but yeah the um design was gorgeous i like coco more in it where she's also a new designer i found in this last year but yeah it's not my favorite make i'm gonna make myself wear it this next year especially in the warmer month because it is intended to be a warmer month sweater um but yeah not one of my favorites but that's okay okay um my camera has just shut off after um, some time filming and I have looked back at the footage and I have realized that with filming everything I might go over the two and a half hour mark which wouldn't be possible for me to upload. <laughs> my internet is not good enough for that and I know I knew it would be a long video but I think I'm gonna cut it here. I'm gonna make a part two which I'm gonna upload just shortly after uploading part one I hope maybe like two three days after so I hope you're still gonna watch that. It's gonna be the last um, couple of months of 2023 what I made this last year and then some of my learnings, uh, some of my highlights, some of my favorite makes, some of my goals for next year and then some of my um, favorite media and podcast recommendation. Okay, I hope you're gonna come back for episode two. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being such a great community. I hope you're taking care of yourselves and I hope you're getting loads of knitting time. Um, I'll see you in the part two. Bye!